Welcome to another video. Let's talk about the convergence or divergence of this infinite series. Usually when you get a series problem, you will be given the chance in the problem to guess what your answer is going to be. Is this a convergent series or a divergent series? Now looking at this, there are two functions. One causes convergence because if you write this as 1 over 3 to the n and you ignore this one, you can always treat this as 1 third raised to power n because 1 to the n is still 1 and this is 3 to the n. And you know that whenever you have a series with a common ratio that is less than 1, let's call it one, whatever we call it. This will always converge because the common ratio is less than one, right? But if you ignore this one and what you had was one over n square root of n, this is a p series with p less than one. This is the same thing as one over n to the one half. As you can see, this is less than one. And for a p series, if p is less than 1, it's going to diverge. So this problem actually brings you something that converges and multiplies it with something that diverges, so you cannot really guess. So what should you do? Whenever you have this kind of combination, you want to do the direct comparison test, because that always helps. Let's get into it. This is the main idea behind direct comparison. You have to look at the function you have and look at another function that is similar to this function that you know is convergent or that you know is divergent. You just need to pick a function, okay? That you know is convergent or divergent. But this is the trick behind it. The function you're given will always be in the middle. Don't forget that. This is the best idea for direct comparison because that's what we're going to use for this one. Now look, the convergent function is greater than the function that we have. The divergent function is less than the function we have. If you can find a combination of a function that is greater than what we are given and it is convergent, you're good or a function that is less than the function we're given and it is divergent, we're good. Because if the function we find somewhere on the street, if it is divergent, it's going to push our function into divergence, going to push it away. If the function we find is greater than our function and it is convergent, it's going to force our function to converge and we can conclude that this function is convergent or this function is divergent depending on what we can establish based on what we have. So this is what we have to do. You're going to go here and try to increase this function. Okay? You're going to try to increase this function or decrease the function. If you try to increase the function, we're going to make something else that's going to be this function. If you try to decrease it, you're going to make another function that's going to be this function. Okay, so let's try the decrease first because I know the increase is what's going to work. Okay, so let's try to decrease this function. How do you decrease a rational function? If I have 4 over 6 and I want to make this smaller, what do I do? To decrease this function, I need to increase this or I need to decrease what's on the top. So how do I decrease this? Well, look at this function. I have 1 over 3 to the n, I have the square root of n. If I want to make this smaller, all I have to do, remember, to make it smaller, you either reduce the numerator or you increase the denominator just to make it smaller, right? A very smart way to increase this function to something you're certain is going to happen is to increase the square root of n, I mean to certainty, because if you increase it to n, what happens is this is still divergent, 1 over n is divergent, 
1 over 3 to the n is convergent. You still have that conflict. So increase it more to 1 over n squared. So what you have is 1 over 3 to the n times n squared. Now this definitely is bigger, is smaller rather than this function. So we know that this function here is less than the function that we have, 1 over 3 to the n times square root of n. Why? How do we know this is smaller? Because the denominator is bigger than this. And whenever that happens, you now go back to your chart and say, I've been able to generate a, a smaller function, which is here. But what do I notice about the smaller function? The smaller function is not divergent. This is a convergent function because you know that 1 over 3 to the n converges 1 over n squared also converges. This is a p-series, okay? So just look at the way, that's how to eliminate this option, that what we're looking for is not to become smaller, but to go bigger. Because this actually converges. Remember, this is smaller. We're dealing with a smaller version. So the smaller function that you generated actually converges, so it doesn't go in the direction you want it to go. You want it to go up, but it's going down because this converges. Because this in your mind, okay, you don't have to write this as part of your answer, but this is part of the paperwork you're going to do or in your brain, okay? What you need to look for now is the opposite. Since you know that anything bigger than this function will give you something that tends to converge, you now refocus your mind and say, I am going to find a function that is bigger than the given function and I know it's going to converge. So now you know that the, you shouldn't look for a smaller function. You should look for a bigger function. So go back here and ask yourself, how can I make this function bigger? Well, you can either reduce the denominator or increase the numerator, right? So let's just be, let's have fun here. Look, one over three to the n times the square root of n is definitely less than square root of n over 3 to the n square root of n. See what I just did there? I just multiplied the numerator by square root of n. Because the n's are bigger than 1 after you start the, the process, this is going to be always bigger than or equal to. Let's put it this way. Because in case n is 1, then the two of them are the same. Okay, but this is good. So now we have found that the function that we have is always less than the new function we have created. But the new function we have, cre we have created can be simplified this way. Look at this. This is 1 over 3 to the n. We know that 1 over 3 to the n, square root of n, is always less than or equal to, which satisfies this condition. This is our given function. This is what we just generated. So this is going to converge. You don't need to do anything. Who knows whether this is going to converge? We know it's going to converge because this is a geometric series with a common ratio of one third. Okay, so we say that this series, one over three to the n, n equals one to infinity, converges since it is a geometric series, let's write it this way, geometric series with common ratio with r less than 1. Okay, the common ratio of this is one third. It's very obvious because this is one third raised to power n. It converges and now because we know that we know that the series um, 1 over 3 to the n square root of n is less than or equal to the series of 1 over 3 to the n for all values of n. And since this one converges, okay, since this converges, 1 over 3 to the n converges, we know that the given series 1 over 3 to the n square root of n also converges by
direct comparison test. That's it. The video took longer than it should because I wanted you to get the point. Never stop learning. Doesn't stop learning. Stop living. Bye-bye.